Okay, for this um, part, we're going to talk about the home ribbon. Uh, we're going to work with the file that we uh, started on last week, which you can find in your Dropbox or if you don't have it in your Dropbox in the assignment section in LAMP. Um, you do want to make sure you put it in your Dropbox uh, when you finish um, today because we will have made changes to it. Um, again, in Word, the home ribbon is the ribbon that has the most commonly used tasks. Uh, some of them you can find in other places, um, but uh, most of them just come on the home ribbon um, for that. And we want to talk about a couple different things, uh, the first part being the font section. Um, and the font is the way the characters appear um, in your document. Uh, and if you want to change the way they appear, you use the font part of the ribbon. Um, the font style drop-down um, is uh, the drop-down that lets you pick the style of the font. Um, whenever I'm applying font formatting, I need to select the text uh, first. Uh, practice selecting like we did um, in the last class, but I can get time zero, so I could change it to Arial if I wanted to, or um, lots of different choices. Um, See what that one is. Anyway, like I said almost any um, font, there's lots uh, to choose from. Next to that, you'll find the font size, and so you can make your font, um, you know, specific size uh, if that's what you want to do. If you don't know exactly what size you want to make it, um, you know, say I want to make it just wide enough to fit on the screen, which actually that one was, so I'll shrink it a little. Um, we have the grow font. And you can grow it till it's as big as you want it. If you go too big, you can shrink it. Um, and the grow font and shrink font buttons make it bigger and smaller, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, down here we have a couple toggles. We have the bold, which makes the text bold, um, italics, which italicizes it, and underline, which underlines it. And again, you turn it, click it again, it will turn it off. Um, underline has a cool little feature in that you can change the underline style. You can even, if you wanted to, change the underlined color. Uh, let's go. Let get a nice bright blue. Um, anyway, so you've got, and you can see uh, how that works. So you've got, you can play around with that um, a little bit. Um, uh, you can change the color of the font to whatever color you want. And uh, that's another um, feature. And then if you don't see something on here that you want to do, um, you've got the dialog box launcher. That's that little box in the corner. It brings up the dialog box. Okay, and again, you you maybe didn't like the the font style. You can pick a different one. The nice thing in this box is it does preview it um, for you. Okay, so you can pick the color, the um, style, the font. You know, if you wanted something like small caps, you could do that. And when you're done and you're happy with the way it looks, you just click OK um, and you'd be uh, good to go. Um, let me go ahead. I'm going to take that back to times the see. And 12 point. And no underline. And no bold. Okay. Oops, and I better take the small caps off. Um, make it black. Take off small caps. Okay, so now it's back to um, what we had before. Um, another little thing that I like to talk about, um, most of the papers that you would do um, require to use Times New Roman 12 point. Um, if your uh, Microsoft Office does not have Times New Roman 12 point as the default and you want it to make, make it that, you could open the font dialog box launcher, tell it Times New Roman uh, 12 point, and then please choose set as default. And you would say all documents, okay, again, mine's already set, so I'm not going to mess with it, but say all documents, click OK, um, and it will uh, fix your um, font so that every document you open is Times New Roman 12 point, okay? Now, um, that was kind of a little demonstration, which I didn't say at the beginning, um, to uh, watch and then, then do, but now together we're going to make some font changes to our document, okay? Um, we're going to change the font to the first line. So this one up here, we're going to make it Arial Black. Um, let's see if we can find There's Arial Black. And we will make it uh, 18 point. Okay, so Arial Black, 18 point uh, for that. And if you changed it when you were messing around, you can just go ahead and make it Arial Point 18. You don't have to change it back. Um, uh, where you see Grow This Text, we want to make it bigger. 
You can make it you know, as big as you want, doesn't really matter to me. Just grow it a little bit and we'll do the opposite with the shrink this text and make it a little smaller. Um, so uh, we've got uh, that going. Um, all right, I'm going to take the word bold, double click on it to select it. Remember we did that last time and make it bold. Okay, uh, do the same thing for the word italics. Double click and make that italicized. And then for the underline this sentence, select it. And you can use the selection bar. That works um, for that. And pick an underline that you like. Again, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to play with that, you can. And then we'll change the font color to whatever color you like. Um, let's see, I think I will go with purple today uh, for that. Okay, so that is um, the font formatting part of the uh, header ribbon or sorry, home ribbon. Um, and the next section over here to the right is the paragraph formatting. The paragraph formatting applies to a paragraph. Um, and in Word, paragraph is a little bit different than what we think about it maybe in English class. Okay, A paragraph happens to be anything with that little P sign after it. Now, how do I get that little backwards P up there, the paragraph mark? I use the show hide button. Okay, If you have it turned off, you can click it and turn it on. Um, personal preference, whether you work with it on or off. I know most people like it off, but what you have to understand is every time you hit enter in Word, you are creating a new paragraph. And that's the symbol that appears when you hit enter. Okay. Um, if uh, you do that. So paragraph formatting applies to anything between the paragraph symbols. So you could see, like I said, this little sentence here, that's paragraph. This word bold, that's paragraph. This little thing here, that's paragraph, okay? So paragraph formatting applies um, to the whole paragraph when you apply it. Um, we've got different things we can do with our paragraph formatting. Um, we've got bullets, bulleted lists and numbered lists. That's these up here. And um, you can see, again, just watch for now, and then we'll do together uh, when I get to the end. Um, with the bulleted list, you can pick your bullet, okay? Um, if you want to get a little um, fancy, you could even pick, let's say, uh, symbol, we could do little clubs or something like that if we wanted to. Click OK. So you've got um, you know, your bulleted list for that. That's a toggle so you can turn it on and off. But you can see it's a drop down as well so you can have choices. Um, next to that, I'm going to take that back to undo. Okay. Next to that, we have our numbered list. Oops. Um, or below that, we've got the numbered list up here next to so it. We have numbered list. Again, you can see with the drop down, you have choices. So if you want one, two, three, Great. If you prefer ABC, you've got that too. Um, so that's set up for that. Uh, and you have options. So if you wanted to start with a higher number or a letter in this case, um, we could do that. So if you want to start with G, I could start with G. Maybe you're continuing from an earlier list. Um, okay, so we've got that. And actually, next to that is the um, multi level list, which you can use for um, outlining. What you would do to get to the next level is just press Tab. Um, to in, you know, indent it and take it to the next level. Um, let's see. Okay, show hide we've talked about. We've got the um, uh, increase and decrease indent button. Okay, I'll show you. That's the oops, decrease. This is increase. That just temporarily changes the margin, okay, or indents the text. It happens for the whole paragraph, okay? So again, if I use the increase or decrease, it does the whole paragraph, not just the first line. We'll talk about how to do that a little later. Um, we've got the sort button here. Let me show you how that works. I'm just going to sort this document, which I know is a very silly thing to do. Um, but I'll tell it, sort my paragraphs, it's text, click OK, boom, and now my document is in alphabetical order. Um, when would you use that? If you had a list that you needed to sort, you could do that. When you're doing your work cited, which we'll learn a little later, um, that's supposed to be in alphabetical order. We can use that. Um, we've got these alignment buttons. Um, alignment. Uh, is uh, how the text appears between the margins. And the default is left aligned, which means it's even at the left margin and ragged at the right. Um, we've got centered, which means the text is equally centered between the margins. Um, it might be ragged left and right, but it's centered. Uh, right aligned, which means the text lines up at the right and is ragged at the left. And we have justified, uh, which is equal um, borders. Um, I'm going to take that back to left. We've got our spacing button. Um, and we can double space, which is what we use a lot for research papers. We can single space. 
Um, we, and we could do more if we wanted. Maybe we had to do a lot of editing or something. We could triple space. So you can space things um, however you want um, for that. Uh, something, uh, this is the said shading and borders, which come in more with tables. We won't get into that. Um, and then we, of course, have the dialog box launcher uh, that brings up the paragraph dialog box and more options. Okay, a lot of what we just did, we can do the indenting. Um, there's two kinds of special indents. There's first line indents. Okay, that's where the first line's indented and everything else is not. That's standard paragraph um, indent. And we have a hanging indent. Uh, which is where the first line is at the margin and everything else is indented. Uh, you typically see that with um, like bulleted or numbered lists and also uh, that's how you do your work cited. And we'll actually do more with that a little bit later. Um, I want to pull up the space, the paragraph launcher to show you the spacing. For some reason, the default um, in, in Office 2010 is to have a 10 point spacing. Um, after for every paragraph, which is kind of a pain. So if you don't like that extra space, just set the spacing after to zero and tell it to set as default. Um, and you can um, uh, change that for it as well, just like you did with the font. Okay. All right. So let's practice a little bit with the um, paragraph formatting. Come on down here where you see the word center and we'll center it. And then where you see the word write, we will write align that one. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the first four lines, we'll pick the bulleted list here. Okay. Um, the first four lines, we're going to make that a uh, bulleted list. Okay. So you can pick, uh, just click turn it on, or you can pick a bullet if you'd like. Uh, I'm not real picky about that. Uh, for the second list, the numbered list, um, well, let's do the number with the little parenthesis after it. Okay, so set that. And we're going to double space this list. So we'll set our spacing to two. Um, and then we'll change the spacing before. I talked about changing the spacing after. Um, we're going to, uh, let's pull up our dialog box after. We're going to set, set the spacing before to 50. Okay, sometimes you just need space on your page. So uh, I'll change that to 50 by typing it. I will click OK. Boom, and I got some extra space there on my document. Um, turn, turn on show hide if you haven't already. We can do that. Okay. And that's it for the paragraph formatting. And then the last thing I want to talk about on the home ribbon is the um, clipboard. And the clipboard is a um, tool that is not just a word tool, it's actually a computer tool. And anything you put on the clipboard is actually available in other documents. So I, or, or other programs even. I could cut, copy something from my Word document, paste it into an Excel spreadsheet, or um, find a picture on the internet and copy it into my PowerPoint. Okay, the, the, the clipboard is just a computer tool. Um, when I want to put something on the clipboard, I can select it. If I use cut, it disappears from where it is, and when I hit paste, it, comes, it goes where I tell it to. To go. I just pasted it in the same spot for that example. Um, when I choose copy, it stays where it is, and when I paste it, it appears in the new location. Okay, so that's cut and copy and paste. And then the other thing, um, if you see on here, is the format painter. Now, the format painter is kind of cool um, because if you get a format you like and you want to use it in other parts of your document, you can simply click on the format paint, click on the text that has the formatting you like, click on format painter, and then whatever you click on. This one, one that's not formatted. There we go. We'll get that formatting. Okay. Uh, undo for that. Okay, so that is the format painter. Um, and then um, that, oh, yeah, to do. Let's go ahead. Come that back up and get rid of all of that. Oops. Let me do that one. Okay. Um, uh, do the clipboard uh, stuff. So scroll down to the bottom of your document where you see this is the text that you are going to cut. And we want to take that and we want to cut it. And then we want to um, go up to uh, da, 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 following the word right. Here it is. And we will hit paste to paste that. And then we'll go back to the end and we will select the text we're going to copy. And we will hit copy. And then we will go up to where we see um, 
grow this text. So we'll click there in that black line after that and click paste. And then we're going to copy the font color to the center, but then we'll have to fix the formatting because we want to keep it centered. So select font color, hit format painter, click on center, okay, and it copies all the formats, not just the font formats, which is why if we want it centered, we have to go back and center it again. Okay, so go ahead. If you haven't already, um, save what you're doing. Make sure you know where you're putting it. Uh, my documents is probably as good a place as any. Save that. Uh, and then once you've saved it, um, if you're going to keep going, that's fine. If you're not, make sure you put a copy of it into um, your Dropbox. Okay, go to Dropbox. Choose Add, Upload Files, find the file that she's saved. Uh, oops, I put it in my documents. Okay, and upload that file. 